Why do there need to be so many cryptocurrencies? Mom, do we really need more? And the banking system is hopping on the blockchain bandwagon. And of course, being music buffs, we're especially excited to speak with the chief marketing officer of a brand new site called Musiconomy. Turn it up to 11 and kick out the jams, because episode 23 of the Bad Crypto Podcast is coming your way. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition. Who's bad? Travis, you know what I got? What do you got? I got the music in me. I got the music in me. And I got music economy in me. Yeah. You didn't even know that song. I did like, not I did not know that song. You were singing it earlier and I was like, dude, what is what is that? And then, but you, then you played it for me and then I still had never heard it. The namesake of this episode, based on the play on words, is I got the music economy in me because we're gonna be welcoming David Werba to the show a little later. But first wanna say hi. How you doing? Joel Com here, uh, author, speaker eternal 12-year-old and creator of the iFart app, alongside one of the top marketing technologists in the world, Travis Wright. Yeah, yeah. Uh, potentially the universe, because I don't know if there are any other marketing technologists outside of Earth. So well, I, you know, I could stake that claim, right? There, there's there's no intelligent life on Earth, so... That is true. There's a big challenge today with that. Although, all of our listeners... What we're doing is we are accumulating the smartest, most amazing people. So only True. those folks are able to listen to our podcast. So welcome to the to the smart lunch table. Yeah, and they, <laughs> the, the cool kids are over there, but the smart kids right here. That's right, you guys. We're, we're sitting over here talking about the crypto, you guys. Hey, do you hear that sound? That is... Our Google voice number that is ringing, even as we're recording this podcast, I'm going to click in and send it to um, to voicemail there. And you guys can call that same number at 708-885-9030. You can't make this up. That was actually a call coming in just now. So if you have questions, comments, uh, you want to tell us where we can pick up the bucket of chicken that we just ordered then call us there. You know, maybe that was somebody trying to hack the system and actually try to get in on the show live. And we just turned down a, an epic moment in, in uh, bad crypto history. That is going to happen, though. There, there will be um, a live bad crypto show. So stay tuned for that. Of course, we're still giving away our token, bad coin, of which 65 million have now been distributed. If you want to discover how you can get your free 50,000 bad coin, go to badcryptopodcast.com and in the search form, just type bad coin. And Travis, we've also got a fledgling YouTube channel, don't we? We do. So every episode that goes live, we then put a the image of the show into that, a little nice little uh, image card. And each one of those episodes go live on YouTube, as well as all of our YouTube extras, right? So our Bad Crypto extras, they are on YouTube as well. And I noticed that we have, Joel, we only we have less than 300 subscribers on there, Joel. That's just a shame. Hey, you guys go over to our YouTube channel. It's If you'll just click to it from our website, click subscribe, and we're going to have some fresh, fresh, amazing original content for you there and actually speaking. actually hold on hold on we're gonna wait for you guys to do it right now okay so it's it's badco.in forward slash youtube and go ahead and pause the show go on over to youtube right now we are going to wait on you <whistles> have you gone or are you just waiting no seriously pause the thing go right now subscribe i don't think Look, I know you're. You, I can tell that you didn't do it. So, <laughs> stop. All right. Don't make me come down there, Junior. That's uh, speaking of fresh, here's a fresh question, fresh from Google Voice. Hey guys, it's Steve from New York, and I really love your podcast and everything that you're doing. Thank you so much for what you're contributing. 
My question is, um, one of the things I struggle with understanding right now is, why do you need so many different cryptocurrencies? Uh, it seems like a lot of the ICOs are designed to run on the Bitcoin or the Ethereum platform. So if that's the case, why do you need an individual crypto for each? Why can't uh, everything simply run on Ethereum? All right, thank you. Yeah, Travis, why? Oh, my There's God. So many. So many. I'm with all the cryptos. Ah, so confusing. <laughs> I'm telling mom. You know, that's a great question, though, because there are a lot of cryptos out there and the that are being built on these blockchains for these top cryptocurrencies, right? So, so Bitcoin is a top blockchain. Uh, Ethereum is a top blockchain. There are some other ones as well that you can build these smart contracts on. And so that is why, really, that Bitcoin and Ethereum are sort of taking off, right? So they there is a lot of stuff being built on top of those. So in theory, those look like they will always be relevant. Now, a lot of these other crypto tokens and assets, they are, you know, adding extensibility to the platform in unique ways, and they're solving unique problems problems and so it's a way to to fund their companies it's a way to um you know pay and, and do stuff inside of those different uh, those those different companies as well those different platforms solving unique problems joel what, what do you have right. to add to that it's a different utility and i kind of think of it nerd like because surprise uh you know as a wordpress person wordpress is a platform for publishing your blog but there's all these different plugins Pluglings? What did I say? Pluglings. Pluglings. <laughs> All the little pluglings are running around. There's plugins that most, many of them are free. Some of them are paid, and each one of them adds a different utility to WordPress. So there could be a cool plugin, for example, that helps you track your crypto. There could be another plugin that um, allows you to build your email list or to do social shares. Same thing with Chrome extensions, right? Different extensions allow you to add utility on top of Chrome. So that's why- Same thing as mobile apps, right? Mobile apps, the exactly. iOS, yeah. So that's why there's these new currencies because they're adding a new utility that the original platform um, facilitates but not designed to do in and of itself. And so hope that answers your question, Steve. Thanks for calling. And Steve, make sure to email us your uh, BitShares ID because we would like to send you 100,000 bad coin tokens for your trouble and uh, asking us a question. So thank you. Hope that solved your, uh, hope that answered it for you. No trouble at all. That's 100,000 virtually worthless tokens that we can either confirm nor deny may be of some value someday. And now, to the news. Now in the news, something kind of interesting and obvious, right? Uh, cryptocurrency trading is helping make traditional Wall Street traders millionaires, right? So this is a fun space to be in. It's a lot of a lot of a lot of ups and downs and value cr increases and the crypto space is obviously huge. So there are more and more of these uh, Wall Street traders that are leaving traditional Wall Street and they are joining the crypto bug. According right? to the story on Cointelegraph, a mm -hmm. uh, trader who has been with uh, DRW Trading, he tweeted, his name is Mike Komaransky, he said, after 16 years of trading, today is my last day at Cumberland BTC. Good luck to the crew. I wish you the best. He discovered Bitcoin, and he is discovering many more of the profits trading in cryptocurrencies than uh, traditional stocks on Wall Street. And this is not uncommon. There's a report on CNBC that says many stock traders are pulling out their billions from the stock market. Um, so that, that bodes well for the crypto markets in general. And this one also, when you start to see institutions, the banks jumping into the crypto realm, you know that something is up. There's a story on Financial Times, six global banks join forces to create digital currency. They're calling it a utility settlement coin. Now, I thought that's what Ripple was. You know, that is one of the uh, companies that is working towards solving some of the problems. But I don't know that all of these banks are going to all jump on 
the same you know token or the same cryptocurrency and you know we've noticed this joel over time here especially with the you know the enterprise ethereum alliance all of these different banks that are joining into that and all the big you know uh, silicon valley tech companies like microsoft and you know some of these other ones that are joining intel etc cetera, etc cetera, you know it, it is becoming more popular with you know these banks and these different institutions and this one right here that you just referenced, we're talking about Barclays, Credit Suisse, the, the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, HSBC, MUFG, and State Street. So some pretty big banks uh, in the in the Swiss world, and they are joining to create their own new blockchain. Yeah, and it looks like, for example, by the end of next year, late 2018, he, uh, the spokesman expects the utility settlement coin to be used for banks to pay each other in different currencies. The example here is if one bank owned, uh, owed $100 million to a rival with a 50-pound debt in the other direction, the two institutions could transfer the money almost instantly using the new coin. So these big banks are seeing the benefit of moving money around cheaper and faster on the blockchain. I think that's a pretty cool thing. Also a really cool thing is just kind of to mix it up a little bit. You know, we've talked we've had we've had an episode about Bitcoin and crypto mining. We've talked about mining a little bit. We've had some questions about mining. Uh, n neither Joel or I mine that much. Joel's Joel's tried it out. I did it back in the day. Failed miserably. Lost a bunch My of Bitcoin. My computer cried. It like had a nervous breakdown when it started mining. Those it was just like working too hard. And I'm like, I thought this whole work at home thing was supposed to be easy. And <laughs> right. And then uh, you, you don't want your computer to die because there's so much stuff going on there. So you really need to have a dedicated system if you are going to mine. That's the best approach. And uh, so Asus is a uh, you know a, a GPU and computer you know a manufacturer, and they have just launched a motherboard that supports up to 19 GPUs. Holy cow! Nineteen. I mean, I've got a, I've got an Nvidia graphics card. I think it has two GPUs on it, maybe. But this, uh, the B2560 mining expert, a board with 18 PCIe X1 slots with the ability to theoretically support 19 graphics cards. That's mind blowing processing power. Of course, 10 years from now, you'll go, 19, we support 1,000 now. But, you know, for here in 2017, this is uh, this is a miner's paradise. Yeah, so it's a mother's board, and it looks like the price is not going to be too ridiculous for that. But the real the real cost is going to be in those graphics cards because those there's actually a shortage of them right now uh, in the market because so many people are buying them for crypto mining, which is why we talked about a few episodes back where uh, all those companies that are making these uh, graphics cards their stock price has increased substantially. Not not a bad investment. Uh, this is definitely the mother of all motherboards. And finally, from the news desk, who's heard of Kim.com? You may have heard of Kim.com in the news before. He is a notorious for uh, file sharing, and it was tied up in a little bit of a, I don't know, was it a, was that a fuzzy ethical thing? Do you know much about the background of his... Uh, is file sharing well you know you know how how governments are they like to regulate things and when you are a little bit of a rogue they like to shut them down and he had a website called mega mega upload and mega is still around and you know you might have heard about him with with some of the um he sort of jumped in with wikileaks and was chatting about so he, li he likes attention right kim.com dude he named his he named himself.com right joel's name actually is com he Kim was like, no, dude, I want to be .com. So. Who would name themselves com? That's so bizarre. I actually did not. It is my real name. And yes, I've heard the jokes for years. Is your middle name dot .com? And they, they think they're being original. If you thought of that joke and you thought, I wonder if you heard that. Yes, I have. Thank you. So Kim is launching a new application called BitCash. And he's doing it through the KDI. K, K die. And he's doing it through the K.IM platform, which is, again, a file sharing platform that allows anyone to upload documents, code, videos, and music files. Only the exception here is this is on the blockchain and people can get paid in Bitcoin 
for the work they do. Jim.com is always has his fingers in, you know, new things and he's always trying to disrupt stuff. And the K.im platform, it is not up yet. Uh, you can go there to apply for a an invitation. You, it's it's early access only is available. At, and he said it's it's bit cash, and that's spelled B I T. C A C H E. So cash as in not cash money, but like to cash files, you know. Um, uh, so it's a little bit, little bit different there. So this is interesting. If you're going through this, check it out. The, that is in the show notes. And uh, people are going to be able to, um, what, I guess it's a, a file storage. It's going to be, is it sort of like uh, storage? Yeah, pay, well, you, you, not storage so much as you upload your content and people pay to download it. So there's actually an example on this story on Bitcoin.com. This guy, uh, who the author of the article, uploaded his How to Solve the Ru Rubik's 3 by 3 document using the platform, and he put a fee attached to it and showed how you would display the content on the page. Um, and then, of course, the content is distributed across the cloud in P2P torrent servers and social media sites. Um, and using the K.im currency, people can buy that content. So it becomes a new distribution network to get paid for sort of stuff. like BitTorrent, except you're getting paid for uh, allowing people to download the files from you. Are, are they also doing copy? Copywritten stuff as well. That sounds like I, it might be a little dangerous. So I would imagine anything that's content can yeah. be offered on it. So we'll keep an eye on that and let you know what we find. And now let's move on to our featured segment today. We have sought to bring you some of the best, brightest, and most exciting companies in the blockchain space. And we located uh, this company that is tokenizing music, because let's face it, girls just want to have fun and music just wants to be tokenized. The company is called Musiconomy. It's kind of spelled like you think it would be, but only not. It's music, O-N-O-M-I. See, see what they did there? And the website is musiconomy.com. And we have with us today Mr. David Werba, who is the co-founder and chief marketing officer me welcome david what's up guys i, I want to say a quick word um hopefully you'll see have a lot of words yeah d first though i got the bad crypto care package from ups this morning i want to thank you guys for sending that out the fruit basket and the jar of bad coin yeah. thank you very much you have physical bad coin? Yeah, physical. I don't want to show it, though. I just want to shake it. Well, the, you have something I don't have. But I'll tell you what I did get. Travis, you haven't seen this yet. I'll, sh I'll share with both of you guys now. Uh, to add to my physical Bitcoin collection, and by the way, those of you who are just listening in your ears, this is going to be a, a bad crypto extra extended remix so at the end of the interview when you go to youtube or facebook you'll be able to see more it's kind of like the dvd with extras so look what i got here trav oh you got yourself a litecoin i got me a litecoin and you got a dogecoin uh, oh, an Ethereum one. I was gonna, if I was a betting guy, I was going to say you got yourself a Dogecoin. So your bet nice. will be right in about a day or two because I ordered a physical Dogecoin. For those that can't see, these are one ounce tokens that clink like that because they're just not like silver. nickel. Or, yeah, they're not silver. Anyway, uh, so I hope you enjoy your bad coins there, uh, David. <laughs> Your your stack of worthless cash. Yeah, I've I just spread them out on my bed at night and just lay on top of them. You David, can make it rain if you want. It's great. Yeah, it's, it's a nice feeling. It's more like hail if uh, if those are falling down on you. That is um, true. David and I got to talking and discovered we actually have a mutual education and mobile background thing a thing I'm a jigger. We both went to the University of Illinois. He majored in psych. I minored in it, which means our butts probably sat in the same classrooms at some point. <laughs> Magical. A yeah. couple of psychos. Nice. <laughs> well, all right. Enough jibber jabber. Music yeah. economy is cool. Let's talk about it. What in the heck is it? Oh, man. So it's, gosh, 
I don't know where to go with this conversation. A lot of a lot of. Well, people... let's talk about the problem. What what's okay. the problem with music? What in the industry that it needs a solution such as music economy? Uh, the industry is broken. It's it's deeply broken, and it has been for decades. And, and Travis broke it. Yes, yeah, that's I what I hear. It. Yeah, I that's what it. I hear. But I mean, you look at you look at the leading brands today. You know, like Spotify, Pandora, SoundCloud, Apple Music. Um, these are dominating in terms of like the online and streaming space. So you look at Spotify; they they have yet to finish a year in profit. Like they're they're so deep in debt, and it gets worse every year. And that's the model that is like the face of streaming online. It's just kind of obnoxious. It's ridiculous. It's uh. It's part of the old paradigm. I mean, you know what? Actually, I remember that. Travis, you, uh, your description of um, like the banking system, the way it works, about how many people dip their hand into the pot when you wire money to someone overseas. Like there's all these different people. They touch that money. They reach in and grab some of it. That's analogous to the music industry. All these intermediaries, you know, putting their hand in the pot where it's not even necessary. And that's because uh, the major labels are <laughs> trying to scoop up all the money, really. I mean, yeah, and a lot of times what yeah. happens is the musicians, they just get well, like a small fraction of the revenue from their albums, right? So a lot of these a lot of these bands, they're making most of their money out on the road uh, doing live shows because, you know, they could sell, you know, a million records and not make much money at all. I've, you've seen so many stories about how you know, the record industry has hosed over the creatives over time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So I guess this is kind of like something that I've been repeating for the past few years. And my explanation is that the these platforms, they're, they're actually built for the major label artist. And what's so messed up about this is that like the independent artists and even fans and just listeners, they're conditioned by the industry to think that that's the way it should be. And what is even more disturbing from my perspective is that independent artists, they fight to get listed on Spotify, Apple, you know, Pandora. And once they're listed, after they pay the intermediaries just to get them on there, they, they celebrate. They celebrate like, hey, I'm on iTunes, I'm on Spotify, blah, 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 right? But that's actually, the same as getting listed in Walmart with a new product and being on the bottom shelf against the back wall where no one ever sees you. Yeah, I'm on the back wall. Yeah, the bottom shelf. Yeah. But Woo. I have zero sales the entire year. Like the, it, it's just totally messed up. Like it's so backwards, you know, so there's a lot of education that needs to be uh, kind of created here. And that's what we want to do. We want to be part of the education and also the change and the fix to all this stuff and the blockchain is a big part of it so and to add a little credibility sauce to why you're the right guy to do this i was looking at your bio you've been in music for a long time um, as an artist as a web developer you've uh, founded music related startups you've produced local and national tv shows for fox nbc and uh, you're also the co-owner and editor-in-chief at Indie Music Plus. So uh, as a touring musician, music, this is kind of out of a need that you've felt in yourself and your peers, right? Oh, I, I lived the life, man. I mean, over 800 shows for in about a 10-year span. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I was cams and, you know... <laughs> gullies and all those i played those places you remember those, those are the, the, the university of illinois places he's talking about the yeah. club we're in urbana champagne where uh we went to school ill yeah i and i so I and I. There that's it is. where i started but yeah i lived that life i was i was touring i was in the in the studio i was playing in multiple bands uh throughout that time just because i preferred that over getting like a part-time job i just figured i'll just play in another band so i could make sure to pay my bills um but most of the money i made was with with a cover band which is <laughs> kind of disturbing but that's just the way it works you know play stairway to heaven man. yeah 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 I, but, I have a question for you david now, now how do our now for artists on spotify right how how is it 
that uh, are they making money on that model? I mean, why doesn't that work for them? I mean, I know you're going. On, I'm, I'm going there. I'm paying 15 bucks a month to Spotify to have their account, so my my kids can have their own account, and so there's money going into Spotify. But why is it not working for the artists? Are they not getting paid enough? I get. I get. That's there's like a multifaceted answer to this. So when when you look at the major label artists who's on Spotify, um, for a million plays. Uh, you make about four hundred and fifty dollars for a million wow. streams, right? That, wow. That's their cut. So wow. not now. Think about an independent artist who gets a thousand streams and is happy about that. Dude, he gets four is, cents. Yeah, not this even is pennies, pennies right there. So wow. <laughs> but again, I go back to what I said before. People fight to get listed on there. Like they want to be listed, and then they celebrate. That's why because the like, exposure can then lead to a lot of plays which can then lead to touring where they can sell their right. merch. So how does music economy intend to solve this problem and make it a win-win for uh you know obviously the consumer that's listening to the music but even more so the labels and the artists. Okay, I'll try and kind of say one more thing and bridge into that with okay. Spotify why why do artists keep making less and less money spotify is fighting with the majors the majors want more and more money over time it's not just spotify it's wherever their artists are listed apple same thing uh, i'm sure you guys have read about this over the years that you know the fight once a artist you know reaches a certain level of fame it gets nasty because the 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 deals that they had to sign in the early years are so far weighted to the label and mm -hmm. it's hard to, it's hard to kind of change and break that and it just gets so nasty so there's really the deal you have to sign with the devil at the crossroads too that's <laughs> tough I mean, that's just that's so right though about, i mean it's like a, a handful of billionaires kind of control like the whole space when you get down to it and that's the way it exists in a lot of different industries when you really like go down the path all the way to the end that's what it comes down to all right, so first of all, it's you don't just slap Spotify on blockchain. I think that's the first, a lot of people think that, oh, you're on the blockchain? Okay, so you're the Spotify of blockchain? No, not at all. Like their business model doesn't work. It's, we're, we're a business, we're a for-profit business. We wanna make money every year. And we also want artists to make more money than they can anywhere else and also give them new opportunities and, and create like the com complete global economy here. Um, so by doing that, we don't, we, we're not gonna be, have to be fighting with major labels at Muse Economy because we're, we're not starting with all those deals in place. You know, the, the independent artists is once they upload their music, they earn streaming revenue and it's instant. They don't have to like go through, you know, hoops and red tape just to get their money. They don't have to wait for it. Um, and same with a licensing system like ASCAP, that's a whole like royalty and licensing system is built into the platform. I mean, it's not built yet, but it's going to be built into the pat into the platform. So, and just quick word on timing, like our alpha version of the platform is probably going to be coming out around January. Oh, nice. Yes, that's we're fun. just we're talking about what's coming. It's it's this is not built quite yet. Well, that's beautiful. So you have a great you have a great graphic on your site where it has here's the listener and then here's the smart contract. Right. And then on this particular song here, maybe the guitarist gets 25 percent. The singer songwriter gets 50 percent. The drummer gets 25 percent. Apparently, the bassist, he doesn't get anything. And the keyboardist and the cowbell guy, they don't get anything in this particular example. More cowbell. <laughs> so even Travis, even better than that, we we showed proof of that concept at Music Coin because our our team, our music economy team built that platform. Mm -hmm. So that yeah, was so this is your practice. first rodeo. This is, yeah. uh, you know, you've been you've been down this road. So explain from a practical standpoint, I am a uh, musician, um, a, a very bad one if I were one, but uh, I'm a musician and I want to distribute my music. How does it work? You join, you'll join, you'll upload your music and in the process, you do what Travis just said, you set the percentage yourself. 
just like you would do with ASCAP. It's like the writer, the whoever wrote the lyrics, you know, whoever did the music, that's up to the band. We don't take any part in that process. And then you have a paper play license once that's done and upload it. And then every time someone plays the song, you get you instantly your balance accrues in cryptocurrency in your back office. And at any time you can withdraw that to an exchange and cash that out. And thousands of artists did that on our beta platform, Music Coin, so that we've already gone through that whole process. This isn't oh. a myth like that we're hoping will come to fruition. We've already proven it works. So this means the listener then needs to have the currency um, in their wallet in order to listen for what each stream or is it that they can buy a song one time and then listen as many times as they want? How does that work? That has not been 100% decided yet. Like, But the plan in the roadmap is to have um, accept subscriptions, which we, have, we didn't do in the past, but a lot of people were really suggesting that they think that would be work. So like a fiat subscription or paying in different currencies uh, for, you know, plays and, you know, stuff like that. That is not finalized yet, but that's one of the first thing we want to just get worked out in the next month or so, um, because that's, that's crucial how that's going to work. But yeah, I find that interesting to me because like, say for example, I'm spending $15 a month on Spotify every month. And let's say one listen to a song was a penny. I guarantee you that I'm not listening to 1,500 songs a month collectively on my <laughs> Spotify account. I, I'm literally—I yeah. I don't listen to a lot of music. I, I, I love music. I, do. I love music, but I mostly listen to learning stuff. And I love how you guys are going to have streaming radio and podcasts and, yeah. and some of the other things available on your platform as well, right? Wait, I'm a, I'm a casual. Mean? Yeah, I'm a casual yeah, listener of though. Spotify. I, I listen regular, and and I actually did the math on it. I'm paying about six cents a, a listen. Does that mean that the Bad Crypto Podcast could end up on the Music Economy streaming platform? It will, Joel. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So let's talk awesome. about that. I'm excited about the podcast. That means that we'll get paid for listens. So let me ask this. Why would somebody go listen to our show on this platform when they can go to iTunes and listen for free? I know there's a good answer. One reason would be to have exclusive shows on news economy uh-huh. or, or even just exclusive episodes, but uh-huh. that, that's up to the host and the artist. But, but Joel, I mean, like, like we talked on the call last week, we had, we just kind of scratched the surface on this. I was a broken record to my partners on this, like in the spring, because I was my pass is pretty deep into the podcasting ecosystem. I've, I've done a couple hundred episodes and I'm like you guys like probably said it 20 times until it's like, finally, let's just put it on the beta platform and just see what starts to happen. But when you, you understand that the podcasting ecosystem, you're paying roughly 15 bucks a month to host a podcast on wherever you go, Podbean, you know, Stitcher. I, I, I don't even know all of them right now, but 15 bucks a month and you make zero dollars off of all the listen you can have a hundred thousand listens of your show and you make zero dollars you might get a sponsor for 50 bucks or a hundred bucks here and there but it's a losing proposition for like 99 percent of podcasters right now so imagine if you upload a podcast episode all you need is to hold one token that's what i'm thinking this is not final, but I got to run the math on this again. But I'm thinking one token per episode. And so let's say the token's 50 cents, 50 cents an episode. But every time someone listens, you earn coin back to you. Mm-hmm. You know, so I like how, to open yeah, up my I mean, wallet and see coin. That makes me to be very happy. Uh, and you guys are really happy right now because you've just been through a very successful crowd sale. So yes. congratulations. Talk a little bit about that. <laughs> it was uh, it was not an easy summer, man. It, it was it was a lot of work. Uh, it was pretty stressful. And, you know, the whole seven day a week deal that you got to do in the startup 
bootstrapping for months, but it was calculated. Um, and a big key to that was the partnership with co-found it. So I, I want to say a few words on that because that, that was kind of the first big moment in this story for us. Um, you know, starting at music coin, all of us, uh, once we decided how we kind of wanted to branch off with the project, um, we submitted to co-found it and they had, I think a little over a hundred proposals from blockchain companies that they received and they picked two in the beginning oh. and we were one of them. So that was huge news for us. Like they chose us us and Santiment, a company called Santiment, which is like a market sentiment software. Um, mm -hmm. And so that was that was enormous news for us because it's like, okay, we have this partnership in place. This is a just distributed venture capitalist company. So they like facilitate and support crowd sales. That's what they do. You know, they, they help set us up with legal um, marketing and just like the entire process from A to Z. Mm -hmm. um, because to do it on your own, man, that, <laughs> I mean, you guys follow these things. This is, not, it's not easy to do. You have, there's so, so much many you have steps. to prepare. Yeah, so there's so many. many. Oh my gosh. Yeah. In, in fact, I've just, uh, I put um, uh, uh, an ether into a company that is intending to serve a huge market, brilliant idea, great concept. And because their marketing was horrible, the crowdfund was just a disaster. <laughs> and uh, right. they're gonna, they're going to have to shut it down. I mean, their site is beautiful. The application is beautiful. The, their their plan looks stellar, uh, and yet huge. Give me fail. back my ether. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I right. will when the contract closes. I'll get my ether back. No, but nice. but co found it. So like they did their own crowd sale for their own uh, token uh, in the spring. They raised fifteen million in two days. Their first project was Santiment. They I believe they did twelve million in two days. So even though it was so much work over the past few months, like we knew it was just a matter of time, as long as we just got our work done and just pushed the right buttons and just hit, got all the ducks in a row, this was going to happen. I mean, we, we just full confidence. And well, absolutely, because they're vetting, they're going through this big vetting process, right? Joel and I, every month now, we're having a sort of a crypto cage match where we are you know, <laughs> talking about three different coins. And then we pick one coin, we're putting $100 in, and we see at the end of the month, you know, how who wins. And one of my three was co-founded just because of the fact that, you know, they're, they vetted hundreds of these ICO, potential ICOs. They're picking the, the cream of the crop, the ones that have the best, you know, teams, and their track record has been phenomenal so far. They were able to raise their money. And the other two, including yours, that they've launched, they've raised money. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm a believer. Absolutely. Yeah. And they're the, the word I just got last week is they're getting five to 10 a day proposals. That That's how many uh, blockchain projects are submitting to them. So, yeah, I'm uh, couldn't be happy with, with that partnership. That was that was crucial. Um, so. What's next, Joel? Travis didn't read my thing there, so now I got to do an edit. Dang it. Oh, nice. Right. Nice. I'll, I'll, I'll wrap it. Let me, okay. let me wrap it here. Um, then we'll move into the other part. Coming back in in three, two. Well, congratulations again. Uh, David Werba, CMO for Musiconomy. The website is musiconomy.com. And looking forward to seeing how you guys are going to create a music economy that works for everyone. Thanks yeah, a lot. What's the token? What's the token uh, uh, initials? The initials are MCI. Yeah, I, I'm excited, guys. I appreciate you having me on the show. We got so much in store uh, in the future of the project with partnerships. We get Music Economy TV. We're going to be doing live stream showcases, tons of media, uh, and the platform. Yeah, it should be ready around January. Excellent. Well, congratulations Love again. It. And make sure that you go over to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page for the Bad Crypto Extra because we're getting ready to do some screen sharing and show and tell for the visual portion. But that's going to wrap the interview. You know what I'm grateful for, Travis? 
What are you grateful for, Joel? I'm grateful for you because I love doing the show with you. It's so much fun. Thank you, brother. And I'm grateful for this industry, this rabbit hole that we have found ourselves going deeper and deeper into, as I know are you. And I'm grateful for each and every one of our listeners because, honestly, this show would just be two blockheads talking to each other, kind of like we did before we started the show. Uh, only we've discovered you and you've discovered us and now we're all one big happy and we're going to be doing some really cool stuff for our community and we're not going to tell you what yet because mostly we're still figuring it out but it it's definitely in the works yes i'm grateful for you guys as well you guys are an amazing amazing group of folks and the, the engagement that we get, the amount of trajectory that we're getting on growth on this has just been unbelievable. And it's all because of you guys. You guys are out there telling your friends about us. You're telling your family. You're telling your coworkers. I mean, we're, we're getting all these stories of like, oh my God, I tell everybody I know about your show. People got to get on crypto. Once you get bit by the crypto bug, it's hard to stay quiet about it, isn't it, Joel? Once you get bit by the coin, you can't quit. There's no turning back kind of like the matrix red pill and uh you know come out of it and see the world as it really is or the blue pill and just go back to sleep you guys have taken the red pill and that's what helps you to stay back who's bad the Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.